Hey guys, Mike coming back with another video. Hope everybody is doing well. Uh, I haven't picked up a lot in the last month. It's been hard to find some new things for the collection, but I have picked up a few. I want to go over them real quick. Um, hope everybody is enjoying the getting ready for the big holidays coming up. And uh, let's get going here. First thing I want to show is this five star bench. I have a lot of the one of ones for bench in the five star from up through 2018. Um, this is the base, the 25. This is 2015, I believe. And I've had the green one. This is a one to five, or one of five. And I just recently got this one in. This is the gold one of one. Uh, I've seen this card sell before once or twice, and it always went for more money than I wanted to pay, but uh, this one type popped up again, and this was more reasonable, so I grabbed it. So I have that little rainbow from 2015. I always did want to get this one after the first time I saw it, so I'm glad it finally came down in price to a point where I could add it to the collection. I'm glad to have all three of those. Next thing I want to show is these 19, circa 1974 Bray Max, they call them, B-R-A hyphen M-A-C cards. Um, uh, the Bray is for George Brace, which is George, Bra George Brace photos were used. And the Mac is for a guy named Bill McAllister, I believe, who actually colorized the photos from the original photos from the Brace collection. Uh, I've had these two for quite a while. This is uh, the way he numbered them. This is card 24 of the set. I think I read there's 288 cards or photos that were used from the 30s that were colorized. And I love this photo of Hank because it's got his little cheesy grin going on, which I've never seen him in another photo do something like that. Um, then later on, I was lucky to get this autograph version. Um... So I thought that was all there was as far as these uh, Bray Mac photos go. If you want a size comparison, you see they're a little bit bigger than a standard card. But this one just popped up. And this one says it's number 36 in the set. I've been, I have not been able to find an actual checklist. Uh, if anybody ever did, please let me know. So I was surprised. These aren't expensive. These are like $20 cards. Uh, and they sold them, like I said, through pu trade publications in the 70s. But the one this one's kind of interesting, and as you can tell, it's from the same photo shoot, so to speak. Uh, I would guess the one on the right, Hank was caught in the, saw himself being photographed, and then he gave the picture on the left of the little cheesy grin for the photographer. So I'm always so happy to get the one and the one autographed. And when I got this one, it made me realize I actually have the original George Brace photo, actually signed by Hank, from the 30s. And SGC put on a Circa 30s real photo postcard of Hank Greenberg. I've had this for quite a while, but it's kind of neat. This is what they did. The photo on the right is the original George Brace. It might even been a Conlon. I know they worked together for a while, so I would assume it's Brace's photo. Um, and they used that photo... They cropped it, and in 74, they made these, the Bray Max, they used the same image. So it's kind of neat that that's the actual, real. that's a real photo postcard. And that was the image they used for this. They cropped it, and you can see the colorization, like um, on the patch, you can see the red and the blue that was added, the skin tone, um, background a little bit those were all hand done and then remade uh, but um and i love the photo i've had this for a long time so i think it says best wishes to sam hank greenberg and that's probably circa mid to late 30s autograph probably somewhere in the 36 to 39 area and it's kind of neat that they used that for that photo. So I was very happy to get that. I don't know if there's any more of Hank or not, but I was very surprised when I saw that one. Is that's the first time I've seen this one since, um, and well, since I've been collecting Hank. I've seen the other one occasionally. 
And then this here is a felt. Now, Brian has got a green, I think, version of this. Uh, there's a few of these little pieces of felt, and you see they're pretty good size. They're probably about similar to size as, as the postcards. They're probably about three to four by five to six inches side to top. Uh, these came off of beanie caps. Brian and I have discussed this a few times, and it looks like they were taken apart, and there's probably like, I don't know, maybe six or six, seven pieces of different players that would be stitched together in a circle to make a beanie top. And they were issued, we believe, in the 30s. I've seen other ones for sale. Hank, Brian's got the green one. This is an orange version. I've only, I've no, this is the only two I've ever seen that I know of. Brian thinks there might be a third one that he's seen. So uh, very tough to find. And I was shocked when this popped up on eBay. And I was very fortunate. I got it for, I thought, a super cheap price. Uh, these are just, you just don't see them. But they're all the stars. I've seen a lot of them listed on eBay over the years. So very cool piece. Glad to get that in the collection too. And uh, this postcard is kind of strange for me to be showing. It's of a Methodist church, but it's in Farmington, Missouri. So you all might know where this is heading. Uh, Barney Pelty, at my other PC. Um, this postcard is postmarked in 1908 from Farmington. That's where Bar uh, Barney was from. The neat thing is that in the off season, Barney's family owned a bookstore in Farmington. So when the season was over, he would go back to Farmington and work at the bookstore. And I saw this on eBay and I thought it was really cool. If you look on the side, the postcard was made in Germany and it was sold at Pelty's Bookstore, Importers and Publishers in Farmington, Missouri. So, I mean, it's, it's I know it's just a, a piece that is kind of related to Barney, not necessarily of Barney, but it's of his bookstore and his family's bookstore, which I don't know if I ever see another one of those or not, but that was really cool. I thought that uh, it gives you an idea. They consider themselves importers and publishers. So, I'm not for sure how big of a bookstore they ran up there, but obviously uh, sounds like it was pretty substantial. So just another interesting little piece to add to the Barney collection. And finally, I'm going to do an Andrew and show you something totally unrelated. I saw this card at the National. Um, it's a postcard. It's a real photo postcard of Mark Twain, one of my favorite writers. And just interesting guy all together. And um, this was made in Europe. I'm not for sure if it was England or France or Germany, where it was at. But uh, it's an R. Tuck and Sons, Mark Twain. It's a real photo postcard. If you've ever looked online to try to see about a photo of Mark Twain, a real photo, they're super expensive. And this is a real photo postcard. And... Uh, Probably circa 1903, before he died, of course. Um, but I saw this at the National, and I was talking to Brian about buying it, but I thought it was a little overpriced. And then it actually popped up on eBay, and I couldn't believe it. And uh, this, since he's had it for a little while, a few months after the National, he decided to let it go for a more reasonable price. So I went ahead and grabbed it. I feel like Andrew a little bit showing the, like an Edison card or something like that. But uh, just a really cool piece to add to my collection. So anyway, that's everything. Just wanted to keep you all updated. Not a lot coming in with some good quality stuff. And I uh, hope everybody's doing well and getting ready for the holidays. And I wish you all the best. And uh, Lord willing, we'll do it again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.